during this Eucharist. I pray for each one of you in your personal intentions. We also remember Cyril Fernandez who is with the Lord. We thank the Lord for his life and pray for his family. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the Gospels and these days readings, we will hear about the bread discourse. One of the important messages of Jesus is, I am the bread of life. Sometimes we don't mean it, sometimes we don't accept it, sometimes we don't act according to it. For the times we have failed to accept God, Jesus especially as our bread of life, let us ask pardon and mercy from the Lord. We'll sing, Lord, have mercy. to your servants, O Lord, and answer their prayers with unceasing kindness, that for those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the second book of Kings. In those days, a man came from Baal Shalisha, bringing the man of God bread of the first fruits, twenty loaves of barley, 
and fresh shears of grain in his sack. And Elijah said, Give to the men that they may eat. But his servant said, How can I set this before a hundred men? So he repeated, Give them to the men that they may eat. For thus says the Lord, They shall eat and have some left. So he set it before them, and they ate and had some left, according to the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord. Your response to God's word is, You open your hands, Lord, and you satisfy us. Please repeat. You open your hands, Lord, and you satisfy us. All your works shall thank you, O Lord, and all your faithful ones bless you. They shall speak of your glory, of your regime, and declare your mighty deeds. Your response? You open your hands, Lord, and you satisfy us. The eyes of all look to you, and you give them their food in due season. You open your hands and satisfy the desire of every living thing. Your response? You open your hands, Lord, and you satisfy us. The Lord is just in all his ways and holy in all his deeds. The Lord is close to all who call him, who call on him in truth. Your response? You open your hands, Lord, and you satisfy us. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brethren, I, a prisoner for the Lord, urge you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling, to which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, bearing with one another in love, eager to maintain the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace, there is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly stand for the gospel. A great prophet has risen among us, and God has visited his people. Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Glory At that time, Jesus went away to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a large crowd was following him because they saw the signs that he was doing on the sick. Jesus went up on the mountain. And there he sat down with his disciples. Now the Passover, the feast of the Jews, was at hand. Lifting up his eyes then, and seeing that a large crowd was coming towards him, Jesus said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread to that, so that these people may eat? He said this to test him. For he himself knew what he would do. 
people have answered 200 dinari worth of bread would not be enough for each of them to get a little one of his disciples andrew simon peter's brother said to him there is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish but what are they for so many jesus said make the people sit down now there was much grass in the place so the men sat down about 5000 in number jesus then took the loaves and when he had given thanks he distributed them to those who were seated so also the fish as much as they wanted and when they had eaten their fill he told his disciples gather up the leftover fragments that nothing may be lost so they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with fragments from the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten when the people saw the sign that he had done they said this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world perceiving then that they were about to come and take him by force to make him king jesus withdrew again to the mountain by himself there's a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish the gospel of the lord praise to lord jesus christ my dear friends johannes gutenberg invented the printing press or the printing machine and he printed the first bible and so the gospel was spread throughout the world through this right many of us believe that because there are technology because there is printing press the gospel has spread throughout the world beg me to defer you on this it is this small little boy who came forward with his two five loaves and two fish this is what i have this is that littleness that god uses the innocence of this boy that god uses the generosity of this boy that god uses and that is how the gospel spreads that is how the kingdom builds and that is how the kingdom spreads god uses the littleness it was the boy not any grown up man not any grown up individual not any grown up person not a wise person of this world who had carried fish and bread for everybody but this little boy more than this little boy look at the innocence of this little boy nobody around has anybody to eat not carried anything and that this little boy offers something the gospel is based on this offering the gospel is based on this giving look at the innocence of this boy that he offers whatever that littleness is there i don't think it is by force but if it was by force he would have kept it to himself somebody would have forced him and nobody knew that this miracle is going to happen is obviously that little boy is come forward in offering whatever can you imagine 5000 or more people and this small boy may not have any courage to come forward but he offers the gospel is built on offering on sacrifice on giving not on multiplication not on not on printing presses or technologies god uses the little boy the second thing i would like to point out is go to the boy's mother nobody around has carried anything with them no bread no fish 
but his mother has provided his boy why when this boy must have been leaving that house his mother must be saying carry something along with you to eat she did not tell this boy you are too small what you are going to do this boy must have probably heard there is a good big preacher or a big healer or there is a person called jesus who is going there or coming there and i want to go there i want to hear him his mother did not stop him mother supported him gave him this five bread loaves and this fish his mother supported him the atmosphere in the house is already an atmosphere of giving of support and this is how gospel is built this is how the kingdom is built and only when we give you must have realized in the gospel there is first giving of this child is giving and feeding of this 5000 only then there is gathering our attitude is first gathering what will i get from this if something is there what is it in in it for me how will i benefit our attitude is gathering first and giving later on but gospel believes in first giving and only then gathering and jesus says that is how my kingdom is built that this is what my values is and eventually eventually this is a, jesus says i am the bread of life chapter 6 of john what we will be re- reading in the next few sundays i am the bread of life so jesus says this is what the kingdom is built and eventually to the end of the chapter people says this teaching is difficult to follow this teaching is very difficult to follow and they all leave him and then jesus asks peter peter will you also leave me and we have this profound and simple words of jesus of peter where shall we go lord you have the words of eternal life coming back to the passage itself so jesus slips away from them because they are looking for bread when jesus is saying i am the bread of life whoever believes in me will never be hungry whoever comes to me will never be hungry whoever believes in me will never be thirsty jesus says that and these people they don't understand this and therefore they people want to make him the king jesus knows they have grossly misunderstood him and therefore jesus slips coming back to our life whether our life is based on gathering giving or receiving gathering or giving are we always giving the mentality in our house in our person in our life is it giving or is it gathering i want to gather 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 we reflect on this as we reflect on the bread of life on this book page number 5 we have the nicene creed on this book page number 5 on top page 5 together we say i believe in one god the father almighty maker of heaven and earth of all things visible and invisible I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ the only begotten son of God born of the father before all ages God from God light from light true God from true God begotten and not made consubstantial with the father through him all things were made for us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the holy spirit was in sanded of the virgin mary and became man for our sake he was crucified on the pontius pilate he suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the father he will come again living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in our caring and compassionate God, who always extends his hands and satisfies us, let us present our petitions before him. Your response shall be, Lord, hear our prayer. Please repeat, Lord, hear our prayer. That our holy fathers, bishops and priests and religious may endeavor towards the holistic development of the faithful, both spiritually and materially. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That for the mission of building a caring community, we may be inspired by... We may be inspired to share the five loaves and two fishes of our existence, teaching out and building a network of care and compassion for all. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That our seniors and elderly may find joy in their role as storytellers and mentors and, pray war and prayer warriors and never experience loneliness and insecurity. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That parents and grandparents find the strength to mentor and safeguard our families with compassion and care, making our families resemble the Holy Family. We pray to the Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. That the BMC Authority may ensure safe road crossing near our church to protect our seniors, children and all the parishioners. And that our parish committee may be blessed as they address this issue delightfully. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. prayers. Please pray for community and personal needs. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayers. God our Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son Jesus who offered his body and blood for our spiritual nourishment. May the Eucharist be our source of strength and guide us to become more like him. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Offer tree. Friends, that a sacrifice may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the sacrifice of your hands be in the glory of His name, to our good and to the good of all His holy church. Let us pray. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accepting the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, make offers an eternal offering to you through Christ. Our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks lord holy father almighty god for you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the redeemer to live like us in all things but sin so that you might love in us what you loved in your son by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours uh, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience and so lord with all the angels and saints we to give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim Lord you are holy indeed the font of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took the bread broke it giving thanks gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar manner when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and drink from it this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant it will be shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me the mystery of our faith therefore as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of this body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope we remember our holy father and pray for him Oswald our bishop and all the clergy remember also our brothers and sisters who have gone ahead in the hope of rising again bring them and all the departed into the light of your face have mercy on us all especially all of us who are gathered here around this table at this moment with mary the virgin mother of god saint joseph her spouse with all the blessed apostles and saints who have done your will throughout the ages we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son jesus christ for it is through him with him in him in the unity of the holy spirit all glory and honor is yours o mighty father forever and ever amen 
the prayer which Jesus has taught us to first forgive and therefore we can enjoy our daily bread. Let us say this prayer meaningfully. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, deliver us, O Lord, from every evil. And graciously grant us peace in our day, that with the help of your mercy, we may be safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, and now you say to each one of us gathered here, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Therefore look not on our sins on our failings, on our shortcomings, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, this is the Lamb of God who teaches us first to give, to sacrifice, to build a kingdom. How happy we are to be called for his supper.
We thank the Lord for all the people who have been generous to us. We thank the Lord for all the people who taught us to first give before gathering. We thank the Lord for the gift of our last week, for blessing us and protecting us. We ask the Lord to bless our forthcoming week. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Sunday notices. My dear friends, we are in the process of updating our parish census. We have been doing that regularly over the last years, but this time we want to do a more thorough job of the updation of our census. So first of all, two things to keep in mind. The aim of the updation is to know exactly who is a parishioner so that we can cater to parishioners in a better way. The second thing is, no matter who, whether you're parishioner or non-parishioner for us in our parishes and like in all Jesuit parishes, the whole world is our parish. So everyone is welcome to Holy Family Parish for any program that we have and you can join any group and association you are most welcome so anything that we have anybody is welcome so that's the second thing to keep in mind so first we want to know who is a parishioner for our planning but everybody is welcome please remember this everybody is welcome to Holy Family Parish you may join any group association be a lector or whatever you want as I said the whole world is a parish now some things to know, first of all, who is a parish? We want to get this very clear. A parishioner is one 
either individual or family who resides within the boundaries of the parish. That's very clear. So if you reside within the boundaries of the parish and plan to be on a more permanent basis, obviously then you are a parishioner. You may be working in the Gulf, but that is not your permanent residence. You keep coming here for holidays. So obviously then you are still a parishioner. Or you may be, uh, re there's a redevelopment that has taken place, or you're out of the parish because of education, then you're still a parishioner because you're out only temporarily, but you'll be coming back to the parish. What about parents who have nobody to look after them over here and therefore they are staying outside the parish with their children? They will still be a parishioners under condition that they still have a home within the parish boundaries. So if you have a home within the parish boundaries, you're not staying here, you might have given it even on rent, but you still have a home here, but you're staying with your children out, you will still be a parishioner here because here is where your heart is. So who is not a parishioner? Obviously, those who are parishioners, those who don't fill within this category are non-parishioners. Also keep in mind that a person may have a house in the parish but doesn't stay here. Then that person is not a parishioner. So you may have a house here but you're staying in another parish. Then obviously that is your parish and you'll have to register here. But remember, I told you, you're welcome for all programs. So, who's a parishioner now you know? Who's a non-parishioner you know? While this updation is going on, we'll also be correcting spellings of names, surnames, addresses, and a little more, in some information we'll be knocking off, which we are asking in the past, and only mobile numbers we'll be asking now. In addition to the census will be because of birth or because of marriage, and deletion will take place if you have obviously shifted to another parish or you have migrated, immigrated to another country or because of death. So then the deletion will take place. Two things to keep in mind. One is that uh, if you haven't got a census number, parish census number, then you don't fill up this form. You'll have to register at the parish office because you don't have the number yet. So anybody who has been staying here but hasn't registered yet, please fill up a form. This updation that's going on is not meant for you. New parishioners, even if you're staying for a long time, please register yourself at a parish. And if you want to know a little more about the guidelines over here, you may go to our website, and on the home page, there's a button, you'll get the guidelines there. So my dear brothers and sisters, remember, all of you are welcome to Holy Family Parish. The parish is yours. God bless you. Notices for this week, Sunday, 28 July 2024. From this week onwards, we will be having the full Our Lady of Perpetual Succor Navina, the blessing of the sick and benediction, just as St. Michael's Church Mahim. This will be after the 6.45 a.m. and 7 p.m. masses. The sacred image of Our Lady of Perpetual Succor at our church has been touched to the original miraculous image in Rome. We will be starting the census of our parish from 1st August. Please cooperate with your SSC cluster animator for the same. Guidelines about the census are on our parish website homepage. As a parish, we have decided to stress the importance of keeping deadlines for all our programs and activities. In practice, we request all groups, associations, and parishioners to keep to the date and time given for the registration and start of the program, meeting, and all activities. The Feast of St. Ignatius of Loyola will be celebrated next Sunday, 4th August, at all masses. All those involved in the liturgy at our church are to attend the liturgy far, far prog uh, program at Ashankur Hall on Sunday, 11th August, 5.30 to 7.30 p.m. Please block the date details later. Our parish youth are conducting a raffle to raise funds for the Shirpur Tree Plantation Drive. Kindly purchase your raffle ticket from them near the Koinonia stall. You may view photographs 
of the Our Lady of Perpetual Succor inaugural mass blessing and novena on our website www.holyfamilychurchakala.com. We sincerely thank you for our last weekend collection of rupees one lakh five thousand six hundred and sixty. Sunday, let us meet and greet each other after mass over a cup of coffee. Intention prayer cards with the image of Our Lady of Perpetual Succor of Holy Family Church will be distributed after each mass. For veneration of the sacred image of Our Lady of Perpetual Succor after Mass, please follow the instruction of the ushers. Please note that there is a thanksgiving and intention box placed near the Our Lady of Perpetual Succor image. Mass intentions, 30th July, 7.30 a.m., Mans Mind Mass of Reginald Moraes. My dear friends, it was wonderful praying with you, praying for, for you and this young group we have, the readers and altar servers, the choir accompaniment and the music, the hymn in the communion time was wonderful. It was all a very good spiritual experience. So thank you and wish you a good weekend, a happy weekend. Finally stand for final blessing. The Lord be with you. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.